Hi, Philip Nathan here from Nathan Trust and welcome to another episode of Coming Back From Zero, a collection of conversations we have with local and international businesses that have been severely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Today we talk to Juliet Jones from Flex in the City, a Pilates and Bar studio based in Cork City Centre. It's about a 45 minute conversation. Gillette is not only a fantastic businesswoman, but also very creative and uh, has made a couple of smart pivots to make to mean that she, even though her studio is closed, she's still doing business. So I think it's a very worthwhile listen and I'm sure Gillette could offer some inspiration and in how you can keep doing business during this really challenging time. So enjoy. Hi, I'm here with Gillette Jones from Flex in the City, which is the Pilates and Bar Studio specializing in small group classes and one-to-one -one private training. The studio is based in the center of Cork City in Penrose Wharf. So thanks for talking to us, Gillette. Thanks so much for having me. Great to chat with you today. No problem. So let's jump into it. Um, um, maybe a little bit about your business. Explain a little bit about what you do and how you do it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're, as you say, a full service Pilates studio based in the city centre in Cork. Um, and we have been here, I've been in Penrose Worth since 2016. Um, so we're in our fifth year now, the <laughs> weirdest year so far. Um, and we do a mixture of regular Pilates and um, so sort of leisure classes. But we also do a lot, my background is in rehab exercise um, and I work uh, very closely with some physios, some orthopedic surgeons um, and people who are pre or post surgery, joint replacements, um, people recovering from or, or living with neurological disorders um, and things like that. So we, we work with a, a wide range of people. Um, yeah, and our, we're doing um, really, really well up until the joys of, of this year. <laughs> How many people are work with you in the business? So we're um, we're actually split over two locations. We've got the the Pilates studio in Penrose Worth, um, and we moved the bar studio at the beginning of this year to another studio, um, really close, five minutes down the road uh, on the Monaghan Road. And so and we've your... got over over both studios. We've got I've got eight staff, um, but I suppose I'm in in a unique position where two of them are full-time teachers um, and the rest of them are I suppose, freelance staff. They teach between two and 10 hours a week um, and have what quote unquote real jobs as well. Um, but trained in Pilates or trained in bar and teach because, because they love it. So I suppose I'm quite lucky at the moment um, that the vast majority of my staff um, have income sources other than, than myself, um, which I, certainly took the pressure. That, that that would be quite typical of that in your industry, wouldn't it? Where people, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay, very yeah. good. And the type of demographic you work with, is it very mixed? It sounds like what you do is quite mixed. So is it yeah. male, female, young, old, middle age? It's, it's really, really a mix. I suppose when you think Pilates, you think, or I suppose generally people think women between the ages of sort of 30 and 49. Um, and I suppose that's typically what you might, that's who you think Pilates is for, but our, our client, you know, we sort of see people in their teenage years, particularly if they've got um, orthopedic conditions, um, right up to my oldest client at the moment is 18, she's just turned 89. She sees me twice a week um, and she sees me because she wants to continue to play two full rounds of uh, golf every week and Pilates keeps her moving, so. That's good. I like that. I like that ambition. And, <laughs> that's my uh, goal. When I'm 89, I want to be her. <laughs> but you'll have to find a, a version of you then when you're 89. <laughs> you know, this is it. Uh, do you, and do you own your own premises, or the two premises? Are you renting, or do you own? No, we rent both studios. Uh, the one in Penrose Worth and the one in the Manhattan Road. So we're both renting. Same, same landlord or different landlords? No, two different landlords. All right, we might come into that later. <laughs> so, and uh, so, and then, like, obviously, the, a lot of what we want to talk about is related to how companies are dealing with the, the COVID nineteen crisis. So, um, uh, when did you when did you actually close your doors? I, I'm guessing you've had to close your doors, being yeah, studio. 
yeah absolutely so i suppose we we felt our way through it like like everyone we work you know we've we work with really really small groups so we take max of six people over 800 square feet um and we sort of opt cleaning and hygiene and all the bits but then we closed the weekend i think the friday was the 13th of march we closed that weekend um, and the week previous to that we had closed for group classes and we continued to see people on a one-to-one -one basis only and was it, that guidance and was that guidance you got from the government or was it just you took it on your own initiative it wasn't it, it it's a weird situation and i chatted to a couple of i have a couple of, of friends who are in a similar situation to me in different industries and we closed before the the government directive to close um, and i think there was a lot of i don't want to say social pressure but there was a certain amount of good businesses closed you know a lot of businesses at this point had taken it on themselves hairdressers bobs restaurants etc had taken it on themselves to close and i think there was a lot of of, of social pressure and um, so we did we closed and then it was a matter of days a couple of days after that the i think gyms and studios and things came to close and then after that everything and then i'm guessing you saw revenue just drop off a cliff straight away like, are you are you on are you on kind of per class or is it monthly retain monthly rolling kind of subscriptions you would have how, how does it work with you guys it's so so mostly we we do have some drop-ins but there's sort of few and far between mostly people would buy um either class packs so they're buying you know 10 50 100 classes at a time um, and they use those over a couple of months or they're they're in a, a monthly x number of classes a month so you um, might have a you might have a pipeline of maybe four to six weeks worth of people bought up classes, they say 80% of your classes might be taken up four to six weeks in advance. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we sort of look and that's yeah, that's that's how we plan. It's where we're, I suppose, lucky from a from a cash flow point of view where um it's all prepayment. So you pay me now for your next eight to twelve, fifty classes and then we sort of project off from that. But yeah, instantly um revenue stopped, everyone stopped, no one bought a single thing. Um, and then obviously the other side of that is we're sort of looking when all of this is over, we, we froze everything, froze all packages, froze all monthly subscriptions. And um, when this all is all over and we go back to open the doors, we've, we're looking at a, a, a sort of situation where we've had very, very little revenue for X amount of time. Plus now we owe people classes when they come yeah. back in. So it will be a while on the other side of it. And um, so, so yes. you haven't re you haven't refunded people for classes. You said stick with us when the doors open again. We'll take you, know, you back. We sort of I suppose we're 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 lucky. Um, we have regular contact with with most. We're, we're not like a typical gym where you buy a membership and you don't see you know most people for X amount of time. Maybe once or twice a year. People who come, we know them. We see them. If I don't know them, some of my staff will. Um, um, no one has. As we've we've sort of worked with people on an on a one by on an individual basis. If they if they came looking for a refund, absolutely. You know, we're all in sort of this bizarre time, um, and loads of our of our clients will have lost revenue. Lots of our clients are self-employed, um, but no one has actually come looking for refunds. Everyone just sort of was happy to to pause their packages, um, and then we pivoted quite quickly um, into an online service. And I think that has been instrumental in, in terms of revenue, it's, it's, it's negligible. It wouldn't keep the lights on, but it's from a, from a continuation of habits, from a community, from a sort of keeping people, people involved point of view. I think it's been, it's been really, really successful. I, I might jump back to that in, in a minute, just yeah. a bit more kind of uh, practical or, uh real world kind of uh, scenarios that you to deal with. So your, all your revenue goes, plus you've cut the uh, four to six weeks of revenue once you start becoming fully functioning again. Yeah. Um, um, so you're, you have two different landlords. You, do you talk to your landlords about rent freezes straight away or do they approach you or is that in limbo? It's, it's sort of in limbo um, and I had two different conversations. Um, so, um, and I think, do you know what I think? To be honest, I'm actually quite lucky. Both of both of them are both both landlords. Um, really, really understanding. Have been working with with businesses my size. Plus, 
much bigger um, for years. And I think the the one in particular in Pinners were great. Um, and it was very much, no one's going to chase you for the rent. If you can pay it, amazing. If you can't pay it, let us know. Talk to us, keep us in the loop, and then we'll, we'll figure something out down the line. Um, That's good to hear. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, from my experience, I have heard one or two, but from my experience, the vast majority of landlords that I'm aware of have sort of played ball as much as they could with tenants. Yeah, we are all in this together, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and speaking of support then from the, the, who you bank with, you don't need to, to name who they are, but did you kind of look for extra overdraft facilities or have you, do you get it extended? Do you, uh, do you engage with them or do they engage with you? Do you know what? Again, this sort of, it's, it's, we did, we did contact and we, um, we asked for an overdraft extension. They said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But at the moment we're not working in our overdraft. It's, you know, the cash flow is positive. We're, we're sort of lucky um, that up until now the business had been doing as well as it had been doing um, that I think we're in a, in a relatively strong position. And again, I suppose I'm not the fact that my staff costs when, when everyone's working, my staff costs are huge um, because the service we offer is quite specialised and the training that's involved is very, very specialised. But I've been lucky that sort of my staff were really, really cooperative um, and worked really well with me. So I'm not under pressure from, from that side. Um, and so, but then I think that, that the big question is how long does it last? Um, if it's another couple of weeks, yeah, okay. But then after that, I think more serious conversations with, with banks and things. Okay, and, and on the last part, a bit on the, the supports, yeah, yeah, have you availed of the wage subsidy scheme that the government put in place? We, um, at the moment, um, all, as I say, we have two full-time members of staff. They are still working, but on an online basis. Um, so obviously their, their income has dropped, um, but they're, they're still making money and they're happy. You know, they've sort of rode in behind me. Um, so they're still earning. And the other six are sort of freelance there. I don't employ them on a full-time basis and so, or even really on a part-time basis. And so they are still being paid by their, their regular employers. You still might be able to get some on the people on your payroll. You, you should be able to get some good support from the government on it. They have been pretty good on it. Okay, yeah. So I should look into that a little bit. Yeah, when, I'll, I'll send you a couple of links at the end sure. of this, but there is, there is good support and like we, mm. we, we've, we've talked about this before that what the government are saying is apply now, don't, yeah. don't die wondering, just apply yes. for it, we'll yeah. send you the money if you know you're lucky enough or not to be down 75 or you know 25% or if it looks like your business was very successful during the period, unless you're selling PPE, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't well, apply for this. Yeah, uh, do, absolutely. Do apply for this. Yeah. We're so, sorry yeah, to... We, I, I still, I still get daily reports of you know th this thirty day period compared to last year and the year before and the year before, and it's yeah we're looking we're down sort of be anywhere between eighty and ninety percent day on day month on month. So you are still trading then. We are still trading to yeah to a really really limited degree, and um, we're doing uh, as I said online classes um, and some online online one to ones but really um, the demand for for private sessions sort of fell off instantly. The classes have been good because I think people um, I, do you know what I think it gives people a sense of routine that they've got a morning and an evening session and that's been that's been positive but it's more from a, from a keeping people connected point of view as a, than, than a revenue one. So like, to tell me a bit about your classes then. So normally I imagine you're in your studio there with that lovely old distinctly, distinctively cork wall behind you. Yes. <laughs> the, um, the people come in, but so are you trying to replicate that experience? Um, not really, to be honest. I suppose when you, when you, when you come to the studio, there's this max six people in a class and it's very hands-on and it's a very personal service. We know your name and we know your history. Like we know you broke your baby finger when you were three and that maybe affects your shoulder, all those sorts of things. Um, and we still see a lot of our regular faces, albeit in a tiny screen or a tiny box on a screen now. Um, but you can't really replicate that one-to-one, -one, that hands-on, that sort of guidance in an online setting. 
you, the, I, I said to my staff instantly, the ones who teach, your knowledge is the same. My knowledge of movement, my knowledge of, of how to get you functioning really well is the same, but the service is different. And I think I have sampled a range of, of online services myself. And I think it's, it's very hard to, to try and replicate what we do in studio online, which isn't to say that the online service is, is better or worse. It's just different. And it's, it's very hard. It's like Netflix in the cinema. It's very different. It's potentially a similar concept, but it's not the same. And so I think, and, and what we've done, we sort of, I, I've worked with, um, I've worked with Dervil O'Rourke and um, a couple of other players and we, we've created sort of online videos and online platforms. And um, so we, I've done a lot of filming work already, but it's very different, very choreographed, very organized. There's cameras, there's lighting. It's, and I don't, I didn't have to worry about the technical aspect at all. I just showed up and, and did my thing. And again, to that point, I think the, 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 when you're looking at people's habits, they're, if you're looking at consumer buy-in, the buy-in is very different with a live class to a pre-recorded pre class or a stream service. If you're, if you want to go to the cinema, again, to go cinema and Netflix, if you want to go to the cinema, you're invested in it. It starts at a certain time and you're there at that certain time. It's a different level of commitment. You, if you need to go to the loo halfway through, you're going to miss a bit. You're there and you're in silence. With Netflix, you can pause it, you can come back to it. The commitment level isn't the same. And so I think in terms of what we have tried to replicate is that um, the class is at a certain time. And what times yeah. are they? Morning? Um, yeah, so we're doing a morning, we're doing, now, having said that, we, we do sort of, I suppose, teacher between the two, we, we're doing an 8 a.m., so we do a 7.30 a.m., an 8 a.m., a 6 p.m., and a 7 p.m., um, but we do also offer um, recordings of the classes available to people, but for the vast majority of people, they show up to the live sessions. And um, obviously there are people you know, with kids or with certain schedules who they can't make the live sessions and they, they do the recordings. Um, but for us, I think it's key to offer not just an online class, but a live service. Uh, are you like, I, ultimately the test of the, the, the success of this is kind of bumps on seats. So are, mm -hmm. are you seeing uh, the same group number of people like do you essentially have the same customer base now active customer base that you had before they might be giving you a fraction money wise of what they gave you before but is it like your you, even though your revenue was tailed off maybe 80 percent has as the amount of people you're dealing with tailed off to the same extent no um i was surprised actually um at how quickly people jumped on it and how I thought, okay, we'll see for a week and then we'll see. And they stayed. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're looking at, um, and it raises a lot, a lot of business questions the other side of this, because in my physical space, I've got, so we work with um, reformer equipment and some other Pilates equipment. So, and we've got six of them, so I can only take six in a class. Um, online, I've seen 40 people in a class. Um, it's not the same service, of course, sure. and, and the, the cost of the cost of being in a class with six people in a physical space is much, much higher. We're seeing me for an hour is much, much higher than it is to be part of an online group. But it does raise questions as to your cost base and, and how many people you can, as you say, bones and seats, how many people you can facilitate in. in a but, but do you think you've unearthed something that, you know, your, your, your customers co love coming to your class, but maybe some of them love more is maybe the wrong phrase but yeah. are, really yeah. enthused, are really enthused by doing this online and you know I think people uh, there's some, there'll be lots of changes mm. post-covid but working from home is going to be one of them yeah so, absolutely you know can you facilitate this you know I, I think part this, of this? this is and so I had previous to this I had been um I'm involved in in creating a very, very, it, it, it's, it's groundbreaking in terms of, of online movement offerings. Um, and so we were working through this online and, and da, 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 but um, I think I had grossly underestimated the power of an online live session. Um, mm -hmm. And I think people, and I think I'd, I had sort of overestimated how perfect it had to be. 
So, you know, you think we had done it perfectly um, and there's a time and there's a financial cost involved. Actually, they just want to see, people want to see you. People want to, they want your knowledge and they want your time. Um, and potentially because everyone sort of scrambled really quickly. Um, and, you know, a month ago I had never heard of Zoom and now I could potentially work for their online tech team. Like, it's just, it's incredible how fast we've, we've all adapted. And I think if I had, I, I sort of gone back and forth between this because absolutely we're all going to be working from home more. I think there are people who've discovered that that they actually really like it, that it suits them, that it suits their lifestyle. There are other people that I think who potentially thought it might have been great and realised that it's not for them at all and they don't like working I'm, from home. I'm one of those. Are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I suppose... I miss being in the office. I'm lucky because I have a good balance. I do all the, the office stuff at home, but I have a physical space I can come into and I interact with people. I've, I have the best of both worlds. If I had to work from home forever, I'd lose it. I'd be in a home for the bewildered long ago. But I think the other question is, yes, we're, we're gonna see more online services, but I think the other thing that this has raised is the importance of being with people, the importance of community. And I think it's that fine line between offering your service and for a business, maximizing the potential of your service while also keeping that, the essence, the feel of, of what you're offering. Because it's more than, it's more than, a haircut's more than the haircut. A Pilates class is more than just the Pilates class. You know, it's a... It's, a, it's belonging to a community, of course it is. Exactly, and the fact, yeah. And the fact that the 40 people can see each other or the 20 people to an extent that they can choose to see each other or not. Mm. They feel part, and they're, they're and you, you, you might find that, you know, if you've three or four guys or girls that go to that class, they might be all WhatsApping each other afterwards. Yeah. You know, that was really hard. That was great. So that sense of community still exists. You oh, know? you've frozen on me. Am I back? Oh, you're back. Perfect. Yeah. So that, that sense of community still exists, you know? Absolutely. And we, one of the first things we actually did was create a... Um, a Facebook page, um, a Facebook group, um, and sort of added everyone that we could find, and then people sort of started adding each other, and and that I was surprised at that, how quickly people jumped on that and started posting recipes and pictures, and these are my kids, and this is my at home market setting, and people have, have yeah absolutely come together over it. And here's some crazy paranoid story about how China is actually doing this on purpose <laughs> to poison the world. Yeah. Lots of those videos too, I'd say. There's plenty of those. <laughs> yeah. So you, so they essentially, and I, I, I wonder what you call. Maybe they've come up with a term for it in California, but is this, is this like digital pilates or digital? I guess it. it it's a terrible phrase. Don't use that one. But yeah, I, I, uh, this this is here to stay for you. That's what that's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. Well, the the feedback has been has been like so so positive and people have reached out to me and said when this is all over and we can get back I'll still come back to you in real life but also could you keep an online element to it somewhere and um, it's and I mean there there is online Pilates there there has always been um but I think it, it hasn't been individual um there's a, a phenomenal website called Pilates Anytime and I think that's that's in existence over ten years, and you've got like the Pilates celebrities, um, you know, teaching on there and delivering classes, and and it's a phenomenal resource. But I think if you weren't a, and it's designed for everyone, it's designed for for teachers, and you just want to do Pilates at home, um, but I think for the most part, if you weren't a Pilates teacher, you hadn't heard of it. And I think what this has also brought up is people want people they know. They don't necessarily want Pilates. They want me teaching Pilates or Andrew or, you know, one of my yeah. team teaching. So, so that, that's kind of, I, my kind of final question in the area would be, do you think, so you've pulled it off, it's successful, which is amazing and mm -hmm. well done. But do you think uh, the fact that you, if you decided, if you didn't have the classes, and you, you, you say you could execute in the same way, but the fact that you had credentials and history and you had a customer base, you turned that into an online customer base, do you think that was essential or do you think you could do this from, you know, you could just turn on your webcam and start doing this? Do you think the fact that you had done this offline before was pivotal to be able to do it online? I think so. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it would be very, and that was one of my reservations. And um, 
I like to, like most people who start a business, you start a business because you, you, you're either offering something different or you're offering something that's better than, than what exists. And I, I, I never wanted to, to scream the same message in a really crowded marketplace. And I think that was one of my initial reservations about going online. I thought, well, there's loads of people online and they're doing great things. Um, I think starting from scratch would be, starting from scratch and charging, I think would be very, very challenging. There are people who I've seen, you know, start from scratch and say, I'm X person, da 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 da, um, and do so there's, things like there's the, Joe, there's the Joe Wicks model, which is exactly. mass marketing. He's doing yeah. a great job, my kids do it, and, you know, so. It's and I think. Position. It, it, a lot of it will, will also come down to, it, it's, it's a PR stunt, it's a marketing stunt. Joe Wicks, he has cemented himself. He sort of fell off a little bit and he's right back there, which, I mean, he's doing a great thing. There's, there's, but he's put himself back up. This is a phenomenal opportunity for people like that to, to become really relevant again, I think. Yeah. And just so imagining a few months down the road when the doors begin to open again, uh, are you getting, because I'm just thinking because your studio, because it's, uh, I, uh, I know you're not regulated as such, but mm. are you expecting guidance from the HSC to say, here's how we do it, here's the kind of wet, wet cleaning products we need? Are, are you anticipating, have you got any of that, do you think, or how, how do you, what's it going to look like? We, well, I, I was chatting to um, I have a very good friend who owns a studio in Boston and um, so Pilates equipment is very expensive. It comes in through the US um, and anyone who has equipment is precious about it. And we were very, very precious about what we cleaned it with and, and all those sorts of things. And then towards the end, I couldn't spray enough bleach on it. I didn't care what happened to the vinyl. As long as it was clean, it was good. Um, in terms of guidance, we haven't received anything. I doubt we will, but, but I, again, I think it's, you know, what's antibacterial, you, you know, and I think it's, we're all forever, though, that will be, I think, a lasting hangover of, of this, is that we'll all be really, really, really aware of proper hygiene practices, proper cleaning practices, and um, something we always implemented here, but I think, you know, everyone's going to take it a little bit more seriously now. I think my question is what we do with the social distancing aspect of it. Um, as I say, you're, we're not exactly on top of each other here, but Pilates is very hands-on. It's very corrective. It's very, it's important that you're in the right position. And so I think absolutely I will think twice about adjusting someone. I think I will second guess myself. I think they might think, oh, do I want someone touching me? Do I want someone that close to me? So, and in terms of guidance, I can't really, but then I think, you know, there's me, there's, there's physios, there's hairdressers, there's, there's, there's industries that are going to have to get back to quote unquote normal. Um, and there's no way to social distance that. So I, I think. When it get when it gets to the stage where you, you kind of, you get tested for the antibodies and you go, yeah. I've had it, I'm cured, I'm, I'm not shedding, I'm, I'm yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. You can put that That'll be part of your qualifications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Masters and also corona free. <laughs> or no, post corona infection. Corona free yes. is no good to anybody. That's, <laughs> that's not a good place to be. Yeah. And I guess so, just kind of nearly wrapping it up because we're, we're into it nearly 30, 30 minutes or so. Is um, next six, six to 12 months' time, I, I guess this is like what we're nervous in our business is we've seen a bit of a tail off in a lot of our new business. We've obviously seen a significant tail off, which, uh, but we wouldn't be as like yourself, you know, it's more where we do a lot of regulated work. So yeah. there, we, we are going to get hit, but it's by how much yeah. and possibly not straight, well, not straight away, but we're very nervous about the next six to 12 months, actually mm. from six to 12 months onwards, what that looks like when the dust settles. Like, yeah. like are you seeing yourself being able to run your business if you lose 50% of your turnover? You know, are you, are you looking at those kind of numbers? Yeah, I think, do you know what? I'm not really so, you know, I suppose when we get back to this, looking three months, six months, 12 months down the line, we're coming into the summer, which traditionally for, for leisure business is is a, a fall off. You know, people, summer gets, the weather gets good, kids are off school, people are at a routine, et cetera. So that would have typically been a quieter time for us, um, which isn't ideal coming off the back of this. Um, but I think what I'm sort of, the time frame that I would be no, more nervous about is 
um, early next year, March, April, May of next year, I think when is, is when the, the, the cost of this for people is really going to hit home and everything starts, you know, everyone's gotten a break, mortgages, rent freezes, all the other bits. And I think that was one of my things here. Just keep, keep the head down, pay as much as you can for as long as you can without, you know, killing myself. But so that the other end, you're not as stuck. I think that the cost of this is it's going to be a long one for people. Um, and I suppose it's trying to figure out where, and again, in, in terms of that, I'm really glad that, that I'm relatively established. Um, and if 50% if of it falls off, yeah, potentially, you know, we should be fine. But also, um, I think this has, this has fundamentally changed my business. This has changed how I look at my business. Um, I, I won't operate the same way. Um, the, a lot of it will be the same. We'll still have, you know, the same classes, but I think there'll be a significant online offering. Um, I think the, the, the pricing structure will change. Um, and I also think this has, um, this has, this four stop is like, I would never ever have taken this amount of time out of the day-to-day -day running of the business to, to look at everything. like underneath the bottom line and figure out um you know what exactly am i doing why exactly am i doing it who is it you know who's benefiting the most um where can i add more value where am i potentially offering too much value um, and i think businesses will i think there will be there i think there will be people who who sort of throughout this will think you know, people running businesses who think that there's potentially easier ways to make money, and um, if they're if they're not running efficiently, if they're you know if you're killing yourself to to run the day to day, I think people will take a hard look at it and think, oh God, well, were this all to happen again? Is there know? anything in particular jumped up and surprised you when you started looking under the bonnet so closely? Yeah, do you know what? I I the first week I thought, oh God, I, I think I surprised myself more than I had, a, I had a good handle on the running of the business and um, but I didn't realize how absolutely exhausted I was and I think everyone who runs a business I think you just take it I took it for granted I thought well everyone's always tired it's fine and um, but I, there was something just jumped out at me really hard when I thought okay you know oh, the first week I thought okay this is scary da, 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 da. I was in a heap and then we sort of started getting a handle on it and, and figured out the online and it was fine and I thought I woke up one day and I was out with the dog and I thought I'm facing and I say this kind of tongue-in-cheek but not potential business ruination and I'm more relaxed than I've been in almost five years like there's something that that's that's a lack of congruency right there and I think um that was when I really thought okay yeah my business is running well, it's making money, and also things still need to change. I think the fact that we're all in it together, there is the sense of, you know, I think I, I vividly remember 2008, and mm -hmm. it was only certain sections of the, of the, the economy imploded. Yeah. And we, Ireland, imploded way quicker and way bigger mm -hmm. than everybody else. But I think this is, it, the global nature of it means that it's just, you know, it's not case or ass or ab, but that there no. is a, there is an element to that, you know? Yeah, and I think as a, as a, you know, you have all those phrases, all those great business buzzwords, like control the controllables and bottom line, and just, it, it kind of none of that matters. There is, there is no. nothing controllable, nothing. There was nothing but, really. Yeah, I, but I think, like, it, it, just, to, just to kind of wrap it up and what's, what's really interesting from what you've done is, and what's really, you know, and even though, when you look at your bottom line and you, or your top line and you say, I'm mm -hmm. still down a lot of revenue, but you, you've worked five years to build up a customer base and customer yeah. loyalty and you've retained that customer base and customer loyalty. Like, that's yeah. incredible. That, that, that is, that is, there's so much value in it. And you've, 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 uh, and at the same time, you've probably unearthed another um, revenue stream. Yeah, so. absolutely. And it does, it forces you to sort of really drill down to, what does your business do, and yeah. how can you continue? Uh, when, to do when that? did you go? So, like from the so you, your office is closed on say March twelfth or thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when did you first? What, what time did you first go online? What was your first online class? We sent out emails. I think it would have been the following. I have to double check, but I think it was the following Monday. 
um, that we went online. And you would have gone, is this going to work? Do we have the right laptop? Have we got the audio right? Jesus Christ, is our broadband good enough? You had tons of uncertainty, but you just Absolutely. went. Absolutely. Yeah. I um, rang one of my friends and I said, are you at home? And she said, of course I'm at home. Where else would I be? We're all at home. I said, okay, great. I said, pull out your computer. Um, I said, I'm going to try and set up a Zoom thing. And she was like, what's Zoom? I said, well, you'll know soon enough. Uh, yeah. And ran, ran a test and went, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then um, went online and tried to order uh, a webcam and a um, microphone. Everything was sold out. Everything. It was there was sort of waiting lists because the world had tried. Yeah, it was now yeah, moving yeah. online. Um, and so the microphone came this morning actually. Um, and I borrowed slash stole a webcam from my little brother. And yeah, we figured it out really quickly. And again, it goes back to that point of where is your value? I'm not a tech company. I don't think anyone expects it to be perfect or flawless or as long as the internet is okay and works. As long as you can see me and as long as you can hear me, the value in what we offer is, that's the product. Yeah, I guess full disclosure, my wife is online at eight o'clock every morning. Yeah. To, she, <laughs> yeah. abs she absolutely loves it. Yeah. Like, and and she was. She, she wouldn't. She would have been one of your newer customers. She would have only done it a few months before COVID thing happened. So, yeah. and she's she's locked into it. You know. And that's another thing, actually, that I suppose we've. I've really looked at. Um, uh, I suppose I. I would have taught a lot more. Um, last year, the year before this year, I've stepped back and and looked at running the business a little bit more. And um, so I mightn't have the same day to day with with every with every customer with every client. Um. And so I've had a look and said, okay, well, who is logging in day to day? Who is really sticking with it? And it's some, sometimes it's been surprising. Um, and again, you're trying to second guess people's habits. People who would have been here six days a week in, in real time, um, I've maybe seen once or twice since all of this started. People who I would have seen once or twice a week, I'm now seeing six days a week online and so it, it just goes back to again if you can you know look at what you're offering and you know post covid can you offer that another way the potential to reach a broader market is is phenomenal yeah no you're right and i think that's that's a very good point to end on just two i suppose three quick questions Go one it. is are you still getting your eight hours sleep I'm getting more. I'm getting more sleep than literally than I've gotten ever. Which again, I mean, I know people are sort of all on eat. And the first week, absolutely, I was as doomsday as the next person. But a forced slowdown has been great. Definitely I think there's going to be a there's going to be some conspiracy theories on your Facebook page saying yeah. you started this whole uh, <laughs> yeah. coronavirus thing. I was tired. Uh, <laughs> Uh, second last question is uh, what's annoyed you the most since March 12th either personally or professionally um, oh that's a good one what's annoyed me the most um, I think um, how quick people are to judge people um, has really stood out I think uh, do you know what? I think as a country, we've we've responded just phenomenally. And I think we'll be really proud of ourselves. I think we'll be really proud of our government. I think we'll be really proud of our of our response overall. Um, and yet, you know, you sort of see looks or you hear, I daren't turn on the radio because, you know, there's a sort of constant flow of, well, I saw someone and she was actually walking two and a half metres and but somebody else is walking a metre. It's it just this sort of... Uh, you, just the media like, loves that as well, though. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, and it, it, yeah, I, I, I would hope people would pull back a little bit from... Okay. And again, the, the, I mean, the media, I get it. They, they still have to sell newspapers or magazines or whatever. And what is there to talk about? You kind of have to make stories out of nothing. Totally get that. But I, if people could chill out a bit. <laughs> and uh, to end this, what has made you smile since uh, March 12th? Um either personal or, or business? Business? Um, Created a bit of joy. I suppose business-wise, uh, there's been an ironic smile uh, that actually you don't need as much. You know, it doesn't, you don't, it, you don't need all the candles, you don't need all the flowers, you don't need all the plants, you don't need all the bits and pieces. 
um, which is reassuring um, that your, as I said, your value is in your core product and all the other bits are, are nice, but not absolutely essential. Um, and personally, um, I think the amount of, God, this sounds very Cumbria, very sort of LA Pilates teacher vibe, but um, the amount of people outside walking, getting fresh air, out with their kids, out with the dog, um, has been brilliant. I, I would always have said to people, look at, you come to me once, twice, three times a week, amazing. It's 168 other hours in the week, and if you're not moving regularly, I can't really do that much for you. And I think people, it's made me smile a lot that I've slowed down, that people have slowed down. They're out moving. The weather has been so helpful. Um, they're out moving a bit more. And I think that people will have and hopefully will continue to stop and sort of drill down what do I need, what don't I need, and what you need is a bit simpler, really, than what you think you need. I think that's a good note to end on. Brilliant. Gillette Jones from Flex in the City in Cork City Centre. Thanks very much for your time and really enjoyed that. My pleasure. Thanks so much.